futures contracts. If you're a seller, let's say your wheat, cotton, oil, soybeans, whatever you have to sell, cattle, anything, and you're trying to hedge your bets, as it were, you want to make sure that you have enough money to cover your obligations. So you may decide to sell 10%, 5%, 15%, 20% of what you have to sell. And so you can, once you sell it, you have the uh, ability to pay your obligations. So you're trying to hedge. So if you say you did 80% that you were not selling and you sold 20% and the price of your underlying thing dropped well now you protected yourself if you sold it for a thousand and then the price dropped to 300 you just protected yourself if you sold for a thousand whatever it was and then it went up to 1500 or 3000 or 3500 at least you have enough money to pay your obligations and then you sell the rest for a great profit you're not sure which way the market is going to go. So you want to buy, you want to sell your futures. Now, if you are on the other end and you're the purchaser, you're thinking that I buy these futures because I believe that the price of the underlining thing will go up and up and up and up. So you're trying to make a profit by buying oil at $50, $50 per barrel. If it's, a, if it's a futures contract for $50 a barrel and you have a, a thousand barrels, then you know how much money that, uh, and you're hoping that the price of the barrel of oil goes up to say $65 a barrel or $70 a barrel. And then you have it for 50 and you sell it for 75, you have all that profit. The problem is if the barrel of oil drops to 43 or 42 or 41, you're losing money. So is there money to be made in futures? There's money to be made in futures. Is there money to be lost in futures? There's money to be lost in futures. If you are the seller and the person that buys a future from you makes money, you lost money because you could have sold it at whatever rate that was. If you're the seller and the, the, fut the product that you're selling goes down, you locked in a higher price, you just hedged yourself. So if the buyer wins, the loser is the seller. If the seller wins, the loser is the buyer. A lot of people are looking at, let's see, well, I'm gonna, uh, for instance, a company like, um, a company that makes cakes, I mean, uh, baking goods, okay? You wanna be able to buy sugar for your Duncan Hines cookies or for your Duncan, Duncan Hines cakes. So you, as the owner of the company of Duncan Hines, buys sugar in futures. And then they're gonna deliver that sugar to Duncan Hines. And so they wanna make sure that they know what it's gonna cost. So they buy, buy it at the price that they want to buy it, they, they buy the sugar for Duncan Hines cookies and for Duncan Hines um, cake mix or Duncan Hines brownie mix. And they buy it, say they want it in December. And it's January or March or April or May or whatever. And they want in six months from now, they want all this Duncan Hines sugar. So they buy it. Now they're not trying to speculate, okay? They're just buying it because they need it for their product. Now, another person will see that uh, someone is buying, uh, selling sugar, and they'll buy it in hopes that they could sell it to somebody else at a higher price if that market goes up. So it can either be used for speculation and making money or for a hedge. Okay, for instance... In this example, uh, Duncan Hines wants to buy some sugar. So the people who are selling the sugar futures sell a certain amount of sugar to Duncan Hines at a price. And it's locked in. So now the person who sells the sugar 
knows they're going to get a certain amount of money for the sugar uh, and deliver it on uh, December or whatever. Now, Duncan Hines wins because they locked in the price of the commodity, so they know how much it's going to cost for that commodity. They'll know how much it would cost for flour, for the sugar, for egg yolks, or whatever else that they're putting into the um, product. So they have now decided that it don't, if it takes a, an ounce of sugar or a pound of sugar, or if it takes one cup of sugar for the cookies, or one cup of sugar or half a cup of sugar then they figure out how many how much sugar they need they buy it and then they can make their product and then they can have it set at a certain price if they would have waited to december and the price of sugar plummeted it would have been good for them because they'd make a higher profit but if the price of sugar went through the roof then the price that affected the price of their cookies and whatever else you know cake mix, cookies, brownies. So they use buying futures to stabilize what they know the price will be. Speculators, other people buy the sugar or wheat or oil for speculating that the price will go up or down. You can short or you can go long. I'm not gonna talk about short. I'd rather go long. Long for me, well, if you go short on anything, you risk uh, an unlimited downside. If the price, if you short something for a thousand and you say, okay, boom, sell it, right? And then you expect it to go to 500 and it goes to 1500 or 2000. You have to cover your call. You have to cover your, you have to cover it. And so it, instead of making a thousand dollars, you could lose 2000, 5000, 10,000, whatever. Buying the futures, scratch that, just buy a future. Looking at how much money you might make. Don't try to short. I'm not even sure that you can short futures. I'll have to check into that. I know going long on futures, you can make money or lose money. If you are selling the sugar or the wheat or whatever you're selling, then you have, then you have um, it locked in at that price. If you're the purchaser and you're uh, Duncan Hines or some other company and it's sugar, then you're locking in at that price so you can just put it into your model. There's lots of ways, there's lots of different things that you can make money on with futures, but you can also lose money on futures. If, if you are saying it's gonna be $50 a barrel and it's at $43 a barrel, you still have to pay for the $53, $53 a barrel and you lose money. So you turn around and sell it after you buy it. It's not an option. It's an obligation. The difference between futures and options are you have to buy it at the set price that you said you would buy it at the set price and it has to be sold at the set price that you said that you would sell it for. So it's a very risky thing. Do you want to get into futures? I'm not getting into futures right now. I don't own a company like um, a bakery. I don't need to get sugar and flour and stuff at a specified price so I can lock in my specified price so i know how much to sell the product for so i'm not getting into futures at this time i'm not speculating at this time i think that futures is a volatile market you can make a lot of money you can lose a lot of money unless you know what you're doing it's a uh, very volatile peace out live long and prosper have a jolly good day and god bless you god bless me God bless my dogs that I'm trying to get. And God bless America.